Hello uh, everyone, um, this is Samah Said from uh, CTSNet and uh, we're here uh, at the EX uh, annual meeting in Vienna. Uh, and I'm honored today to uh, talk to uh, Dr. Ahmed Ali Amir Gofran uh, from Shiraz University of Medical Sciences, Iran. And uh, in particular about his uh, presentation, which will be on Friday, uh, about the right atrial appendage utilization for pulmonary valve reconstruction. Uh, hello, Dr. Amir Gofran. Hello. Very nice to see you in this meeting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how is uh, your experience in the meeting so far? Yeah, that's, that has been excellent. Yes, yeah. I've learned a lot. Yeah. Um, as uh, we all have seen, uh, or most of us have seen your uh, video on CTSNet about the utilization of the right atrial appendage uh, for uh, pulmonary valve reconstruction. Um, first, congratulations on the technique. Uh, that actually helped a lot of us, uh, including uh, me, and where we started actually utilizing the technique also in infants. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about uh, the idea and uh, how uh, did it come to you and you start uh, uh, for the application of this? Well, uh, the early results of surgery for tetralogy of follow are quite excellent these days, but uh, unfortunately, many of them face a cascade of uh, reoperations and reinterventions due to chronic PI. Uh, I think uh, any of us have uh, thought about uh, how to do it in such a way that we eliminate this problem of chronic pulmonary insufficiency in these patients. We uh, use different techniques and we use monocusps a lot, the Gore-Tex patch, pericardial patch, and uh, homograft cusps, but they all fail. I think uh, the idea of monocusp will not work because uh, if you have a fixed leaflet yes. and then the annulus dilates as the patient grows and so inevitably it there will fail. be insufficient. They are doomed to fail. Mm. So we thought that if we want uh, something ideal, hypothetically ideal for this position, uh, it should be native tissue it should be alive tissue, I mean, no chemical preparation, so that it may have the chance for growth. And also it should be at least bicuspid to cover the whole annulus. So uh, we thought right atrial appendage is uh, suitable for that. It, is, it has a very good uh, elastic uh, tissue when you cut the muscles inside and uh, it is bilayered, it is native, it is alive, and it is just there. So we thought that we can use it. We started to use like a valve. We harvest it, prepare it, and make it like a valve and put in RBOT, and then cover with the bovine patch. Uh, we did the first case in 2013, I think, and uh, we waited for five years to see the midterm results. And five years later, we did the angiogram, and it was fantastic. It was totally competent. Mm -hmm. So we standardized the technique, made it a routine procedure, mm -hmm. and we published the result and uh, presented, and uh, we made the video of technical details for the others. And so we are going on, and uh, it's, it's good. Uh, that's great. And um, um, now you have uh, done uh, how many? From 2018, we have done 167. Great. For this meeting, we present the result for 142, but now it is 167. The uh, first 30 or 40 cases, we just did it for tetralogy of follow. Mm -hmm. But uh, the excellent results that we saw on those patients uh, encouraged us to go a bit further and use it for more complex lesions, uh, like truncus arteriosus, Nikaido operation, uh, absent pulmonary valve syndrome, pulmonary atresia, actually any kind of situation that you need a valve for the RVOT and you have at least a main pulmonary artery. This is the criteria that when uh, we want to use it. So have you uh, used it inside a conduit, a made conduit or no? Uh, just once we uh, did it in a conduit, in a homograph, the cusps were calcified and we didn't, didn't like them and just put it inside. But the thing is that we uh, insist on the fact that at least half of the, uh, this RVPA connection. Uh, connection should be native tissue. Yes. 
so that it can it can grow. Mm. If it is inside a country, it will not grow. Mm. So um, we use it uh, rarely inside the country. Is there a minimum age or weight for patient that you can or cannot use the ATL appendage for? Well, most of the patients that we operate uh, are around one year old, mm. but we have uh, used in any age. There is no limitation. We have the, the smallest one was 15 days old. The, uh, the oldest one has been 57 years old. Wow. So there is uh, a big range, uh, but the, most of them are around one year old. And uh, it strikes me when you say the oldest was 57 year old, because at that point, probably a lot of us will just use a prosthesis in the pulmonary position. We thought that maybe uh, that's a good idea to put the right uh, atrial appendage there, because we think that uh, it has a good result and uh, we are following that patient and he's fine actually after two years so we will see very good and um, have you uh, i mean if we're talking about the appendage um, about the left side about the left detail appendage is this something that you've seen uh, that you can't use the right and you looked at the left or a few times we have used the left atrial appendage as you know the left atrial appendage is finger like yeah so it is th it is narrow mm -hmm. and so uh, not very suitable for making uh, a valve but the right atrial appendage is a bit wider and uh, we can use it actually one question that uh, people ask is that what kind of uh, appendages do you can be used for a valve creation because they have different shapes and sizes the ideal shape and size is that it is quadrangular yes and it is a bit tall uh, and the width is 1.5 times the height mm. this is the ideal appendage. appendage but life is not ideal always yeah. so uh, we see a lot of patients with different shapes we have learned that almost all the appendages the right appendages can be used for RA, RA valve creation. You can just manage, for example, if it is sharp, it is tipped, you just cut the tip. Or if it is short, you, there is a very important maneuver that when you cut the uh, fine attachments between the medial side of the appendage and the ventricle, when you cut them uh, very delicately, you can go further down, down, down. You can gain some height. Yes, yeah. and it gives you a good height that you can use. Uh, it's an elastic tissue, so you can shape it as you want. So maybe in the last 100 cases, we have abandoned the operation due to the shape of the appendage only in a few cases, three or four cases. But most of the time we can use it. And uh, with the success in the pulmonary position, do you see that that can expand into another positions? Yes. Uh, we have used it now for uh, replacing uh, the whole tricuspid valve mm. and uh, the videos will come uh, soon in uh, CTSnet and also we have used it uh, for the aortic valve accompanied by uh, Conor Rustan operation mm. uh, to enlarge the annulus. Uh, for the mitral we haven't used because we have a bit of hesitation because it has to face the systolic pressure. So we are not sure that it can tolerate that. But for the aortic valve, it, it, it faces the diastolic mm. pressure. So it, 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 I think we, it can tolerate. If you would like to mention a little bit about the outcomes, that would be great. Immediately after the operation, when you see the valve at the operation or uh, echo in the ICU, almost all of the patients have trivial or no PI or at most mild PI. We have looked, but on, uh, what is important is the follow-up of these patients. That's the main thing. Uh, we have looked at the results in two ways. First, as a whole, for example, if you look at the 160 patients now, uh, regardless of the time of the operation, now we see that 84% of patients have uh, mild and less than mild. I mean, most of them know or trivial, at most mild, 84%, which is very good. 10% uh, moderate PI, 
and only 4.2% more than moderate PI. But we looked another way to the results, which is very important, and that's based on the year after the operation. We want to see what, what goes during time. Yes. And that's, the results were very interesting. If we grade the uh, pulmonary insufficiency from zero to three, zero for no or trivial, one for mild, uh, two for moderate, and three for severe PI. The mean grade for patients early after the operation, I mean the first six months, is 0 0.27. Mm. Remember that mild is one. Yes. So it is much less than mild mm. in the first uh, few months. After one year, it increases a little bit from 0.27 to 0.67. Mm. But the interesting point is that after that, it reaches almost a steady state. Mm. It doesn't increase the, that much. Yeah. In the patients with uh, four years after the operation, uh, now it is 0.76. So it means that even after a few years after the operation, it hasn't increased that much, and it is the mean is less than mild. Mm. Uh, about the PS, it doesn't increase from beginning until four year follow up. It's a, st a steady state between 15 and 20 milligrams of mercury. It stays like that. Either this can indirectly indicate that the valve grows or not. Uh, we don't know, but we think that, for example, the mean body size of the patient at the time of operation has been, for example, 11 kilograms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after four years, it is 21 kilograms. So the patient size is twice, mm -hmm. but the, the gradient has not increased. So we don't know that uh, it means that the valve grows or not. We should measure the analysts yes. uh, yeah. uh, to prove that, but we don't have data available yet. And is there any reoperation on the pulmonary valve in this series? Uh, we have just done one uh, due to bifurcation stenosis. We have to, uh, we had to reoperate. And it's interesting that we sent samples from the uh, valve to histopathology and I, we asked them to prove that, uh, that it is uh, viable and they said that it is viable tissue with uh, viable fibroblasts and everything. So we are optimistic that it is alive and grows, but uh, we need more time and more data. And uh, I imagine some of this uh, series of uh, uh, operation where you use the right atrial appendage or uh, we're all primary? For the right, uh, redo cases, if the right atrial appendage has been cannulated during the first operation, we don't use it anymore because the elasticity has gone, there is suture and everything. Yeah. But if in the previous operation it is not cannulated, we can use it, no problem. No problem with adhesions, but problem with cannulation. Okay. Excellent. Well, these are excellent results and uh, we're all looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. I would like to appreciate what CTSnet does for the whole community of uh, cardiac surgeons in the world to transfer the uh, information and the techniques. And uh, as you know, there is a video in uh, CTSnet available uh, about the full technical details of uh, this uh, operation. Uh, and I have a humble request from those who want to do it to just uh, please see the video and follow the points there because there are a lot of uh, tips and tricks in this operation. This is a delicate operation. And uh, if they follow the points, uh, it will decrease the time needed for the learning curve and uh, the, the results may be better. I agree 100%. I mean, we should try to maintain the same technique to maintain the same results. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. I would like to thank you again. Thank you.